Thank you for watching us on YouTube. But did you know that if you're on the go, you can get the full show as a podcast now? You can get our morning breakdown of the most important topics facing our country, news not being covered by the mainstream media, interviews with change-making progressives, and info on what you can actually do about all this. Search for The Damage Report on your favorite podcast app and subscribe so you know when new episodes are ready to go. So in New York, Governor Cuomo has certainly had some good news recently, obviously, in his primary battle. But the news hasn't all been good recently. And we're joined now by Pramil Malik, who's going to talk about the sentencing of one of his longtime top aides. Incredibly interesting information. Welcome back to the show, Pramila. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me again. We're very glad to have you here. So Joseph Percoco had been facing some corruption charges. Perhaps you can help explain those a little bit better. But you were also at his sentencing yesterday, correct? Yep, and I was at his trial, his entire seven week trial as well. Wow. Um, so Joseph Percoco is one of the closest aides to Governor Cuomo. Um, it was reported also during the trial, but also in the media, that getting a call from Joseph Percoco was the equivalent of getting a call from the governor himself. Now, he was just convicted to six years in prison for a pay-to-play bribery scheme that involved two uh, two different projects. One was core development of a uh, parking lot project in Syracuse, but the one that I've been involved in uh, was uh, a pay-to-play bribery scheme um, involving competitive power ventures. Uh, it was a project um, uh, that consisted of a 650 megawatt frac gas power plant that was built in my community in Orange County. And actually, members of our group, including myself, filed the criminal criminal complaints uh, with the U.S. Attorney's Office um, that led to the investigation, subsequent indictment, trial, and conviction sentencing. So. Yeah. Cuomo doesn't like me. No, he's not a fan. I can sort of. I, I guess yeah. I get it. Um, if you're, if he's wrapped up in this sort of thing, I've seen some of the amounts that have been bandied about uh, of the amount of the monetary corruption are, are pretty significant. And what I'm wondering is um, if the connection between the aid and the governor is as close and longstanding. Um, does this will this have any effect on Cuomo, or has he been able to insulate himself from Percoco? Well, this should in principle, be the nail in the coffin for Governor Cuomo's uh, future political career or his presidential ambitions. But we have to think about how Cuomo was able to get away with this for so many years in the first place. He is largely sheltered by a large number of environmental organizations and NGOs that give him cover um, persistently for his betrayal of the environment and his betrayal of the climate, because ultimately, Um, You know, what was this power plant project really about? This power plant project was about plugging New York City, which is the second largest consumer of power in the world, to frack gas dependency for the next 40 years. That's really what this project was about. And that's what the corruption uh, really entailed. And there was the illegal corruption that Prococo got caught for. But there was the legal corruption, which involved hundreds of thousands of dollars of donations, campaign donations, to Governor Cuomo, both for his 2010 uh, gubernatorial race, as well as his 2014 gubernatorial race. Actually, these payments started way back in 2008 when he was Attorney General. Wow, so uh, look, I'm really curious because uh, it it was interesting that the night after the primary, uh, I saw two headlines about what uh, his primary victory over Cynthia Nixon uh, represented. With some saying that the way he had campaigned, the strength of how many votes she got was the nail in the coffin for his uh, future political uh, ambitions. And some saying that because he was able to ward off such a strong challenge, oh, now the road is clear for him to run for president someday. Uh, You obviously have spent a lot of time dealing with uh, Cuomo and his ambitions. Um, what do you think that this, uh, the, the Prococo sentencing, um, what effect does that have on his future potential presidential ambitions? Well, a lot of that is going to depend on these quote unquote brokers of the narrative, both within the progressive movement as well as within the media. Um, it's how they end up casting uh, Governor Cuomo. The, the, the testimony in the trial clearly implicates the governor. There were about five or six different state agencies involved 
um, that were under the influence of Joseph Prococo enacting the policies that Prococo needed um, uh, to uh, enact in order to fulfill his obligation to his, his paymaster. Um, and that could not have possibly happened without the governor's involvement and approval and knowledge. So a lot is going to depend on the media. I mean, we had the New York Times never once, not once, covered the project at the center of this bribery scheme, the power plant that's uh, in Orange County. Even the judge was forced to acknowledge it uh, during her sentencing because she was inundated with letters from the public about it. But, you know, the media really still has not covered this. And so... You know, it, it can easily be passed off as run-of-the-mill corruption um, that Cuomo had no knowledge of. But when you look at how this advances in a, a, a critical industry that is part of a national agenda, because both political parties are 100 percent on board with this national agenda to uh, make the entire country dependent on frack gas. So Cuomo's relationship in advancing that national agenda needs to be closely examined, scrutinized, and rebuked. And you have to remember that fracking and the environment and the climate were big issues in the 2016 presidential race. Yeah. And a lot of people say that's you know, kind of what brought Hillary Clinton down. Well, you know, and fingers crossed that now that he has made it through this primary challenge, the media doesn't assume that, oh, well, if there were concerns about his corruption, apparently it didn't bother the people enough. The media sometimes takes that as an opportunity to stop doing their job and investigating these sorts of things. But fingers are crossed that that doesn't happen in this case. Well, right. and, and it's more, it's important to know this was not run of the mill corruption. This is corruption that is causing bodily harm on entire communities right now as I speak. 100% and um, thankfully there are environmental activists like you out there holding them accountable for these sorts of projects. Uh, Pramila Malik, thank you so much for joining the show once again. Always love having you on. Thank you for having, thank you for having me. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full damage report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.